OK, let's try that again. Take two. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to go back and review. Then we're going to move on to uh, something else. So remember, we have our y-axis, all right? And then we have our x-axis. So remember, ladies and gentlemen, we talked about this. The x-intercept is any point that's going to be on our x-axis when our graph crosses it, right? And remember, these are all coordinate points. When a graph crosses at, an x, at, a, at our x axis, it's called the x-intercept. The y value, right, because we have tick marks on the y's, the y value at, on this line, the y-axis, is 0. Now, when we look at the x-axis, when you try to find, when I say, what about a point on the y-intercept or the y-axis, when the when the graph crosses, it's called the y-intercept. The x value at each one of these points is also equal to 0. So what I want to do is when I say graph using the x and y-intercepts, that means I want you to find the x and y-intercepts. So what I like to do is I like to create two clauses, two cases, x-intercept and y-intercept. Remember, x-intercept are going to be point, point, a point that's when, or when the graph crosses this x-axis. So all the only thing I know, I don't know where it's going to cross. But I do know when it does cross, my y value is going to be equal to 0. zero. Thank you. So what I do is I say y equals 0. So I plug now 0 in for y. OK? Now, what's 5 times 0? Zero? Zero. 0. Good. So 0 equals 15x minus 90. Now, we got to get x by itself, right? So this is just like solving equations. You get the 90 on the other side. Then you have 90 equals 15x. Divide by 15. x equals 6. six. Very good. So that means my x-intercept is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And you make a nice big dot there. So that means that my graph crosses at 6. We can kind of erase these so they don't confuse you guys. That's the origin. I don't know. It's just the 0, 0. Now let's determine the y-intercept. The y-intercept is when you have x equal to 0. So I do 5y equals 15 times 0 minus 90. 15 times 0 is 0. Since it's 15 times 0, can you just leave the 15 times 0 out and make it a smaller equation to where all you have to do is um, nine, or, yeah, 90 divided by 5 on the side? You can do a lot more work faster. I'm showing it step by step. But yes, uh, once you get used to this, that's why we do our homework, right? Get this nice and quick. You can be like, oh, it's just 90 divided by 5, right? So you divide, or negative 90 divided by 5. So I divide by 5. Y equals negative 18. So um, you could go by, you could do a different variation, or you could go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. All right, well, then maybe what I'll do is if I'm going by ones, I'll go by twos. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Just make sure you label. If you're going to go by different values than units, make sure you label them. You don't need to label all of them. Just say, hey, you could go by, just do every other one. That's fine. But if you're going to change or you're going to do different axes, make sure you label that so I know. Don't just go by fours and don't label it. So if I go by twos on the y-axis, I'm going to have some of those look like this. It's going to distort the graph because it's going to make it look like 1 over 1. The slope's 1 over 1, but actually it's more of a slanted one. But anyway, we'll just go for that for this problem. OK? Making a video, man. You got to mask that question now. Uh, does anybody have any questions on this? I was hoping it was a question. Okay.